For some people, packing up and moving to a new city can be extremely scary. But for others, it's exactly what they need to take their career to the next level. Today's guest, Shamoy, has shot some of Young Hollywood's biggest influencers. And according to him, he's just getting started. Hey everyone, and welcome back to The Creators Club, where we find out what drives artists and creative professionals just like you. I am here with, do you go by photographer, social media photographer, what would you say your title is? Uh, crea Lifestyle? Creator. Creator. Yes. I'm sitting here with creator and photographer, Shamoy. Yeah. Welcome. Well, thank, you, thank, you, thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Um, so I guess I kind of just want to jump right into it, and I just kind of want to hear a little bit more about. I know some a little bit of things, but what just a little bit more about. We'll get to that. Okay. But what, you tell me, like, what, what is your story? What, what? How did you end up here in LA? Uh, I mean, it's just a, it was a situation where I just like got bored in New York. I was um kind of got out of a like a pretty crazy relationship. And on top of that, me and my mom we weren't getting along at the time. And it's just like being in New York cold was just like, like if anyone that lives in New York just know that this time of year isn't the, the best, the best year. time to be there, no? Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, on top of that too, and it, it was, it was just basically just like people, like every, everyone that I met, like around like the fall, like started in fashion week, met this one guy, he was just like saying that like, oh, he's from LA. And I was just like, wasn't really thinking about it. I was just asking him, how is it in L.A.? So like, yeah, it's nice. It's really sunny. Big opportunities. <laughs> I'm like, all right, cool. And then, like, I met, like, a really good friend of mine. Uh, to right now, his name's Cheyenne. I met him when I was working at Barney's. And he was doing stylist work. And he told me, oh, yeah, he's from L.A. And I was like, yeah, you should check it out. It's really nice, really sunny. Mm -hmm. I have, like, really good opportunities. And I just kept on hearing that, like, during the months of me like of me like being in New York and I was just like yeah I might ju might just give LA a try at one um mm -hmm. at this point and then like I met Ch like I met other people like literally a bulk of people that was just like from LA and I was like yeah man you should come out here it's really nice you just really kept hearing it and you was like you so know, I just keep the hearing universe it. telling me to bring yeah, my so ass I just to keep LA. hearing it in my head and then Cheyenne came came back to New York like Probably this was the last month when I was just like, you know what, let me just like go. Like yeah. she just he came and he came with this lady that was just like was like super nice to me. She was um her name was Tess, and then she was just like um welcome and she had me like stay in her Airbnb in Manhattan um that weekend and she was just like yeah like you should come to L A like really nice yeah really sunny stuff I've been hearing for almost like four months. <laughs> And I was just like, you know what? Let me just let me just do this because I really didn't have anything going on in New York at the time, other than just like, just like shooting people that I didn't really enjoy shooting, doing stuff I didn't really enjoy doing. So I was just like, you know what? Let me just let me just like pack my things up and go to LA. I mean, I told my mom I was like, yeah, I was gonna move. I was gonna go to LA. She didn't really believe me until my bags were packed. Bags and I was like, yeah. Go. I mean, like I just started off taking photos on on the iPhone, like which. Basically, what every other photographer said that how, that's how they started photography, just uh -huh. taking photos on their phone. But like with me, it's a little bit different because it's like I was, I think it was at the time it was like, it was like iPhone four, probably. Yeah, <laughs> like you're just taking photos on that, and like people were just like, "How did you do that?" Like stuff like that, because I always had the eye for it, and then it was just like, "Yeah, you should really get into it." And I was like, "What?" This is when I first like started going to FIT, and then it was just like starting to. Just like really, just like taking photos with my phone is when the iPhone five came out, and then we were just like, I was like, you know what? Let me just actually just buy a camera, and I bought a camera. My mom wasn't too happy about it, cause she didn't really want me to like do photography. She didn't really think that like it's a serious profession. Mm -hmm. So I just kept on doing it. That's why like me and my like fast forward, me and my mom just wasn't like in a good mood. Weren't um, seen eye yeah, to eye. Weren't seen eye to eye because mm -hmm. like as if like a Jamaican parent like. They just want want you to do, go the old fashioned route, being like a doctor, like a lawyer, or something right. that like. Yeah, I, I had the same experience yeah. growing up. So, so you studied um, fashion marketing at FIT. Mm -hmm. um, I read that so you were in an internship and you were like, you know what, I'm just not, I'm not feeling this. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling this. You kind of found a new love and passion for photography, which you said started with your phone. So mm -hmm. now you got all these people around you and they're like, yo. 
for what you want to do, you should go to LA. There's just some bigger opportunities there. Mm -hmm. Like I definitely believe that you do have to see something outside of your city that you were born in or raised in. Yeah. Even if you go back, I still believe everyone should at least try to see something outside of the city that they grew yeah. up in. So you're in LA, you're around all these people. Where did your, what was your first opportunity that presented itself to you? What was the first opportunity that presented itself to you? Well, yeah, so it started, so it was, I think it was the last week when I moved, when I was like, yeah, I'm going to move. It's actually decided. Mm -hmm. And I met this girl, her name's Nyla. And I did a shoot with her, like, the last weekend before, like, I flew here. Okay. And we, like, really clicked up. We really clicked. And she was just like, hey, whenever you come, just, just hit me up. Like, I could take care of you. And, like, I took her word, like, seriously. And, like, as soon as I got there... Like hit her up. I hit. No, I didn't hit her up until like a month of me being there. I was like, yeah, I'm here. She's like, oh, like yeah, let's shoot. And like I met up with her, did a quick shoot, and she was just like, yeah, I have to introduce you to somebody. I was like, who? She's like, um, yeah, I was introduce you to Eric Galen. So Eric Galen is basically he manages Jack and Jack. Okay. He managed Jack and Jack at the time, and he was like, yeah, he's a super cool guy. Like he like he really believes in like people that like are hard working and I was like yeah like she brought up that I was hard working and she called her she called him on the spot he answered she was like yeah like uh, I really want you to meet this photographer he's really he's really um talented all that good stuff and he was like yeah just bring him by like tomorrow or something and then I like met with him like the day after and he was like yeah like he showed like I showed him my like my photos so like, yeah it's really cool stuff like we should like get you shooting the like the Jack and Jack boys, and then like that's when I started shooting them, and then just took took, took off, off from, from there, just kind of like word of mouth, word yeah. of mouth. So I think what's great about what you're saying is that like not a lot of people have the courage to just kind of pack their bags and go against their family's wishes, go against yeah. what they're used to, and move to a new city like that, especially under the circumstance of taking someone else's word. Mm -hmm. Because that's a big thing in Hollywood that I've experienced that a lot of people will make a lot of promises they can't keep. Mm -hmm. People will say, oh yeah, come, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. Yeah. Then you get there, and it's just not what it presented itself to be. So then you find that yeah. your transition was what it, what was presented to you. Mm -hmm. It was as it was presented to you. Yeah, and I'm like, like, I'm going to be completely honest. When I first moved here, none of like, I mean, like people, like certain people held, held their words, like, like uh, this guy, his name's um Ryan Ryan Potter. He mm -hmm. told me, yeah, like when you come in, you could stay, you could stay with me until you get stuff figured out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he actually held his word and had me there for like a month or two. I was like, all right, cool. Like I told him, like he told me, he was like, yeah, like I do, like like don't want you to overstay your welcome. So it's like you need to hurry up and get it figured out. Mm -hmm. And like yeah, like I got to figure it out. And and just like I mean, like I did come here knowing that like. Like, obviously, people are not going to hold their words. So right. I just had to be prepared for it. Right. And and it's like, yeah, like, I always preach it to people because, like, I do have people that, like, um, approach me on Instagram and they just ask me, like, how do I do it? And I was just like, yeah, like, I just went here knowing that, like, I have to struggle. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to expect everything handed out to me. And, uh, yeah, I came here, struggled, struggled. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going to get into detail how I struggled. Mm -hmm. And... I just, you know what, just toughed it through. And then, like I said, I met Eric and everything, and he just, like, paved the way for me. And I met more people along the lines. And it just literally just, like, all it is is just, like, me meeting that one person that, like, is in there that mm -hmm. just wants to, like, mentor you. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. I mean, mo that's most most likely the case for everybody else that's here. And then, like, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. So you had mentioned earlier that I think it was the girl Nyla, right, mm -hmm. that you met that kind of saw something in me and was like, you know what, mm -hmm. I want to introduce you to somebody else because they, they really believe in people that work hard and, and really just want opportunities. Yeah. What do you think it was that she saw in you to make her to make her believe that this is someone that she should connect to her network? Because ultimately that's what it is, right? 90% mm -hmm. of your opportunities are going to come through who you know and who you're in your network is. Mm -hmm. But I've noticed too, but then also bringing people into your, your circle and into your network is a trust thing. So what yeah. do you think it is that she saw in you that made her say, yo, this kid works hard, this kid yeah. is, is on this something? What do you think it was? Well, I hear this a lot from a lot of people that I work with that it's like, it doesn't, whenever like I shoot with someone for the first time, they, they don't, they don't like really think it's like a photo shoot. It's just, mm -hmm. you're just hanging out with me gotcha. and we're just laughing. We're having a good time, but I just have my camera in my hand. We're just shooting. It's like, I do like have this formula where it's like, I could like, I don't, I don't just make it 
all about taking a photo. Like, I want to, like, get to know the person. I want to, like, know what she does, like, outside of whatever she does. Right. Take the photo. And it was, like, it was like that when I first met Nala, because, like, we we went to go shoot. It was, like, a super cold day that day. And we went to go shoot, and it was just, like, it was at a point where we couldn't even take her hand out, because it's, like, the frostbite was Mm -hmm. just killing us. But we still ended up getting the shots going. And I was like, yeah, you know what? Like, like, yeah, like, let's just finish the shoot and go grab something neat. I know this a really cool spot. Mm-hmm. What photographer, do you, I mean, I'm not saying that, like, other photographers aren't like that. Right, 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 right. But it's like, what photographer does take the time out, out of their, their day, their schedule, mm-hmm. to be like, yeah, let's go shoot, let's go eat. Let's go, like, watch a movie or something. Right, not so what it, it what it sounds like, um, that you kind of created a niche in the sense of, uh, creating more personal experiences with mm-hmm. people, and that's I guess truly what the definition of lifestyle. I don't want to say photography, but lifestyle is. It's yeah. about not necessarily uh, uh, setting up. It's more about documenting mm-hmm. real life experiences, yeah. and that's how I feel like you bring out the true essence of a person. It's mm-hmm. like you really capture their personality. Yeah. So that's that's super super dope. Um, so you've shot. Let me see. I went through your thing. You've done Kiki Palmer. I think you've done Kylie. You've done. What not, was not yet? Not yet. I'm, I'm getting it's on your list. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm actually getting close. Like okay. my like my management is actually working on. Okay, it. but yeah, like I mean, but I've seen a bunch of people who I would consider the what uh who make up young Hollywood in mm-hmm. my opinion. Mm-hmm. So now is that a market of people that you strictly focus on, or is that kind of just what happened? Yeah, not re- not really. It's just like it was just an in the moment thing. It's just like yeah, like I was just handed. I mean like coming from New York where it's just like social media was it I mean social media is a thing in New York but not like here where you come here it's just like you're around people that have millions of followers and you're just like like it's regular to people here that's like oh she has like 3 million followers yeah yeah that's nothing it's like yeah her over there she has like 10 million followers Mm -hmm. and like like having that like hand it to you you're just like all right you know what i'm taking it someone's someone hands you money you're not gonna be like you know what right I don't right, want right right it. someone's handing you money you're just gonna take it you're gonna right. take it someone's handing you free followers i'm gonna take it i'm gonna mm-hmm. take the followers but yeah, it's just like it was at a point where it's just like it's just like i don't want to be known as that photographer to shoot influencers like okay. i mean love shoot with them they're super super cool super dope they do look out for, and then like when i like hit them with like a shoot and I like hit them with my formula of like getting to know them. Yeah, they always want to shoot again and I love that. Like don't get me wrong, but it's uh-huh. just like at the end of the day I'm a creator. I wanna be able to like like do something weird mm-hmm. in a sense. Like I do have like this I'm do like I am coming out with this project. It's called In Due Time where it's like I wanna focus more on like it doesn't ha- necessarily have to be a really big influencer i just want to get someone that really knows how to work a camera gotcha she's in front of a camera she's just working it like i want to like just do make mix architecture with it and minimalism okay like where i'm just mainly focusing on like probably just like right here where i'm just focusing on the the setup of the house Mm -hmm. but then just so happens that there's a girl just like laying laying down watching tv like all that good stuff and like i was gonna mix like nudity in it but it's like not in a pr- provocative right, way. Right, right, It's just in a way where it's just like, oh, she's in her house, she's home alone. Why not just like... Yeah. Yeah, stuff like that. And also how I was going to do it is I, I was going to really like... Because like my roommates, they're really good riders. Okay. Like my, my other roommate, he's a professional boxer, but he has a degree in, in English. Like mm-hmm. he could write... He could literally just write a book and like wow everyone. That's how good he is. And my other roommate, he's very like... Like, he has good intellect, so it's just, like, he was gonna, like, help out in it where we just write small, like, poem quotes. And oh, just I have, see. like, a really nice photo on the side. And, yeah, it's just, like, there's times where it could be... It is not necessarily gonna be girls, it's gonna be also guys, too. Right, where it's just, right. like... Where it's just, like, I'll catch them at their... At their... Their most laxed. Right. Like, where it's, like, they're not, like, posing or, or anything. Or turning it on or trying to be something. Yeah, and it's just, I'm literally yeah. just gonna... I'm literally catching them just there nice yeah like um so i'm just gonna backtrack a little bit so you got you met all these great people who kind of encouraged you to move out to la mm. you got out to, to la and got connected to opportunity to opportunity to opportunity which mm. is amazing because that doesn't usually happen for people it usually mm. takes and like i said we've all gone through our patch of like i'm figuring it out and i'm struggling and then we we break through and we figure it out 
Um, I know you mentioned that you don't necessarily want to get bo uh, boxed in as mm -hmm. like this social media guy, but can you agree that there is a power in recognizing a niche? Like you said, coming from New York to LA, here, like you said, the whole social media and the whole influencer thing is way more prominent, mm -hmm. and there was a necessity there, right? There was a need for someone to capture these people in their yeah. everyday moments, so that with their their content that they're putting up feels more authentic mm -hmm. and feels more natural. So, um, although again, saying you, I know you don't want to get boxed in there, but can you agree that it's important to kind of recognize a niche market mm -hmm. where it's like I'm in a situation where if I do it this, even though I have bigger plans for yeah. my for my work and my photography, my creativity. There's nothing wrong with being like, you know what? I'm going to fill the void right now mm -hmm. and get on. And then we focus on those bigger ambitions. Yeah, yeah. Can you agree to that? Yeah, and I can 100% agree with that. Like like I said, it's just like, it's, they're, they're killing the game right now. Mm -hmm. Like, like every, every platform wants them a part of something. Right. And it's just like, it's just like, if they're, if you're already in that circle, why not just be in that circle and right. like ride on with whatever's going on? But at the end of the day, it's just like, like it doesn't fall under my passion mm -hmm. so i just want to like i am going to follow my passion at the end of the day right but yeah like i mean it's like i have good relationships with every, right. every single one of them so that's awesome yeah. so separate from the projects that you just discussed mm -hmm. what is the the bigger picture for shamoy like what do you what do you see um you, you yourself being a part of mm -hmm. um f let's say five years from now yeah, it's a good question because I still do think about think about that like every day, like I do wanna I do wanna like have, like as a short term girl I do, go I do actually wanna have my photos like, either like in like a just in like a, a gallery mm -hmm. like a really like exclusive not not even like ex exclusive gallery just a gallery where I know it's just like people could just walk by, like. Like where heavy foot traffic is, mm -hmm. and just be like, okay, that's really nice. Who took that? And mm -hmm. just like be able to say, oh, I did it. Like okay. that's all it is. Just be able to say, I did that. Mm -hmm. Was is just basically what I'm going for. But like long term, I do wanna like own like a production company where it's just like I have like a team behind me doing stuff where uh -huh. I could like like just focus on photography. Yeah, it's like mainly photography. Okay, and just like if like if I have a video guy. Just have a video guy and be able to book like big, like big brands, big yeah. like clientels, and I feel like, I feel like it with the with the push that I'm going right now, I could, could accomplish. I could accomplish both, probably even in a short span of time, because I am going at a pretty like hard pace right now. Yeah. yeah. What are you up to right now? Uh, mainly so like right now I've just been like trying to just like, I mean I've been approaching brands, meeting up with um, with like a bunch of like just like like in case like just like small smaller brands just trying to like just um start relationships with them i'm actually just work me and my manager are actually working on like um getting with a couple of magazines like font and stuff okay. to like i just need press because like we've been going to instagram trying to see if um i could get verified okay and they just basically told me the requirements so we're just working on press right now so we could at least get me verified on both platforms nice so on and so forth other than that i mean not much really i've just been still trying to like get like a group of people so i could just shoot them okay to just update my instagram that's basically it now when you're you're going to um these different magazines and stuff it's like what do you want how do you want your work represented in these is it in the form of like advertisements and campaigns mm. is it covering um doing more like uh, editorial spreads what exactly how do you want your work to be represented in these publications I me mean, yeah, as i know it's like hard to pretty like pretty much shift the format of like a magazine mm -hmm. but i do i i am seeing um magazines now move more more towards like lifestyle photography mm -hmm. like like take um vanity fair and w magazine for example they're starting to do the whole like they're still doing an editorial shot but but it's like more like they're having them more on the streets now. Like, say, like, I just saw, like, the GQ was posting, like, their previous spreads for, like, talents that they had. Right. They had Ryan Gosling yep. as one of their, their issues. And, like, I actually have that magazine at home. Yeah, me too. And I look at it, and it's just, like, the way how they took that photo is just, it's like, yeah, I could do that. Mm -hmm. like, like, it's literally what I'm doing right now. Right. Where it's just, like, I, we got Ryan Gosling at his 
chill, like his chillest right now. He's yeah. just really relaxed. They catch in a photo of him just sitting down and just add like a little art direction of him just having a coffee, like having coffee with him yeah. in the pool. Yeah, it's real. Just sipping. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like the weirder the better, basically. But I just do realize that they are going in the direction. They are looking at social media mm-hmm. and taking off what social media is doing yes. and adding it to... It's influencing Yeah, them. like, it's not old school anymore in magazines. Every, like, I feel like it's more for them to be relevant. Yes. I don't want, want that to sound, like, ignorant or anything, mm-hmm. but it's just that, like, at the, end of, at the end of the day, you have to gain relevancy. Yeah, at the end of so the day, that's and that's just how it's going to keep being. So you mentioned a few times um, today in our conversation about uh, management and, and something you guys are working on to kind of take your career to that next step. Mm-hmm. Before we keep going, who are you managed by? Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like like complicated because like I mean I do call my managers because they do they do get me a lot of like work, mm-hmm. but like realist like legally they're not. Mm-hmm. I do give them a cut, but um yeah they're Eric Galen is okay. one, and I have another one. His name is Gabriel Ornelas. Mm-hmm. So he like he's more hands on than than Eric. Eric more like handles my fi- finances basically. Okay. They just, they're literally, they're more of a mentor. Okay. So, like, I okay. feel like I should just start saying that now. There you go. They're mentors than, like, managers. Yeah, and just real quick, for any creative person out there, um, the first step, honestly, in trying to figure out how to move into your, your career or your, your passion professionally is you are going to want to find either a manager, an agent, or a mentor, or somebody that can connect you with information as well as the opportunities in the industry that you're looking to work in. Um, yes, it's totally possible to to find those things and figure those things out on your own. But mm-hmm. if you don't necessarily possess the ability or the, the business skills to be able to navigate and network and figure those things out, you're definitely going to want somebody to assist you in that department. Yeah. yeah. And it's more, yeah, like another thing too is like in terms of advice is like you'd ha- you have to go out. Like you have to go out and just meet people. Yeah. Like a lot of people, they just, they... They just like I don't know if like they're shy, mm-hmm. but it's just that like they just feel like that's the scariest thing to do. Yeah, it's like no, it's not. Like it's better. Like in a sense, I love getting rejected. Oh, okay. That's my favorite. Why? That's my favorite thing. I love getting rejected, cause I rather get rejected than than like having the thought in my head is like that could have been my next break. Mm-hmm. So it's like okay. yeah, like if I see someone, I mean I don't necessarily like go up to someone and be like, hey, I'm a photographer. You should like hire me, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I do, like, maneuver my way in there where it's just, like, introduce myself as Shamoy, let them know Shamoy, mm-hmm. and then when they ask that magical question, what do you do? Oh, yeah, I'm a photographer. Right. I do so and so. That's literally that's literally how I met Rudy. I met Rudy a couple of times. Like, we vibed out really well. Mm-hmm. Didn't tell him what I did for about two months until he asked me, oh, what do you do? Right. I'm a photographer. There you go. And that's I mean, usually the best way yeah. to leverage that kind of relationship. Yeah. It, people can smell it from a mile away when you're just trying to sell them something, a service. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it's almost better to relate to them on a, on a per, 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 uh, what do you call it, personal, yeah. friendly level. Yeah. If they ask, if they're interested, they will ask. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then just kind of goes from there. Let's just talk about day-to-day. What's a day-to-day like for you? Um, so you're... Photography is your main profession, the primary profession. Mm-hmm. What's a day to day like for you? I mean, a lot of, I just a lot of information gathering, basically. Okay. Wake up, I go in Tumblr a lot, like to just like get some inspiration. Get inspo. I make mood boards like literally every day, of the week. Yeah. Just to have it. Um, do watch a lot of like editing videos because I like I do want to like learn not just photography I do want to get into video. Okay. So I just like, it's mainly just inf- information gathering and a lot of a lot of meetings and stuff. Yeah. There you go. Staying connected. Yeah. So for anyone that maybe oh, watch- a lot of emails. Yeah. <laughs> That's sort of my like two emails. A lot of emails. For anyone out there that may be wondering like I want to do what this kid did even if it is in, in their own way. Mm-hmm. What would be like three tips that you can give my that wants to at least get started and get into photography mm. and start learning? Yeah, my dad always tell tell me like this like he always has some weird little quotes, but he's he always tell me is like all right, first thing you need to do is like find what you want to do, mm-hmm. and once you find what you want to do, put thirty thousand hours on that, mm-hmm. and when you finish that thirty thousand hours, 
do another thirty thousand dollars. I'm like, all right. I don't know what that meant, but I'm just gonna follow it. So coming to find out, yeah, like I did. I used to stay up like literally to like six a.m. Mm-hmm. And when when you used to have work at like eight in New York, just learn how to edit edit photos, learn yeah. how to find that that like sweet spot, learn how to find my like presets basically, like because you could make you could right. make your preset and right. like load it up. That's why like all my photos are like super consistent. Uh-huh. But that that alone takes sometimes months just to figure out what your photo could look like. It took me about three months. Like, I kid you not. It took me three months to finally perfect how my, like, photos look. And realistically, that's probably about, like, 30,000 hours that I did right there. And I felt like, once I felt like, I was like, all right, I got that. I was like, how could I step it up another level? Mm -hmm. So I was just like, all right, I need to figure out what's the best camera to have. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's that's an expensive camera, but gonna gonna like get that camera. And another tip too is basically the probably the biggest advice that I could ever give as like someone that like I mean that like art, that's where I'm at right now is right. step out your comfort zone. <laughs> yeah, you have step to step out your damn comfort zone. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. Like I know, like I like grew up around like other photographers that like. To be honest, I feel like they're better than me mm-hmm. in terms of like their technicality, their edits and everything. And it's just the reason why like I'm I don't want to say ahead mm-hmm. is that I'm where I'm at right now is just basically because I literally took my stuff and was like, you know what? I'm just going to leave all my family. Come here. Mm-hmm. Do not know anyone here. I don't have family. You're uncomfortable, so you have. It's that human yeah. instinct of yeah. figuring out how to survive. Yeah, every yeah, and it's just like you like when I tell people that I'm going to, like I was moving to LA. I mean, like I didn't really tell a lot of people. I only told people that like I really wanted, like their like opinion on. Yeah. And yeah. like yeah, like I told people I was like yeah, like I'm going, I'm moving to LA, and I was like, oh, do you have a house there? Where are you gonna work? Mm-hmm. Yada yada. I'm like, yeah, I wasn't thinking about that. I yeah. just like I'm just thinking about like long term. I right. know exactly what I'm gonna gain from it. It's like, yeah, man, you don't wanna you don't wanna like go to like a state where it's just like you don't have anything figured out. Mm-hmm. Like, so why not? You can always go back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. like I mean I could always go back, but I'm not gonna let that like yeah. be the big picture. Right. Like I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna like figure out what's what's gonna happen and what's cool about what's cool about like that situation is that like I do met like I meet like a lot of like really really successful people mm-hmm. like, successful pe- like I can't stress how successful these guys are <laughs> and one of my favorite things that I get from meeting people like that is that they don't like to tell you about how successful they are they like to tell you about how successful they got gotcha it's a story of how they got successful is, is what they live for. Mm-hmm. So they're like, dude, like, it, I don't care. Like, I, I, I do have money. Like, I don't have to ever worry about being right, broke. Right. It's just that, like, at the end of the day, I want to tell you how I got that money. Yeah, and tell ultimately, you. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm trying to establish here. Mm. It's like, I want to <laughs> make a platform. People kind of see you beyond the work that you put out. Mm. People are going to learn best and be motivated by the story. Mm. And what did you do to get there? Yeah. So that's, that's um, a big Yeah, thing. it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, like when you go to the gym and it's like if it doesn't hurt, you're not really Do you doing, doing it. Right? Yeah. yeah. So it's just like yeah, like it's the same same um analogy where it's like you're in a situation where it's like this all right, this is too easy for me. Mm-hmm. Something's not something's not right. Like like I mean I like in a sense it's like yeah, like I know people that like came here and was here for like ten years and finally got to where they got to be, but it's just at a time where it's just like now it's just like social media mm-hmm. could literally bring people in fast. Yes. So it's like I feel like that like that like I use that to my advantage and I'm like really thankful for that. But at the end of the day it's just like people are gonna have their time. Mm-hmm. They just have to like they just have to use the, those like steps where it's like you have to you have to be hungry. You have to go out. You have to find, you have to like, do your research if you know, oh, yeah. there's this party going on and you know there has to be someone important there. Yeah. And you're just going to go there. You see that person, you know what he does, just go in and say hi. Literally, that's all you have to do that's is just say hi. The least, the, 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 the least they could say is no. Right. 
keep it pushing. Um, and by the way, um, a lot of these resources that he's talking about as far as like learning about cameras, learning about settings, and just kind of figuring out um, the you know what it takes to exist in whatever industry you're interested in, as long as you have internet access, you can do a lot of this from the comfort of your own home. So yeah. those 30,000 hours, yes, they should be a combination of you doing online research, mm -hmm. uh, meeting people in real life, maybe having coffee with somebody that you really uh, love what they've done with their career and you want to learn about it. But at the bare minimum, start with just going online. Going on YouTube, you can learn possibly anything YouTube in the world University. on YouTube. Yeah. And what it requires, though, is that discipline and that, that consistency and that commitment of doing it mm -hmm. often. You, know, yeah. you can't do it one day. Oh my God, I did all this research. I'm done. No. no, if you really want to learn how to use a camera, a lot an hour every morning to just doing that. You see what I'm saying? It's almost like putting yourself through your own little school. But those resources that are out there it just takes that discipline and that commitment to go about mm -hmm. um, learning it. Yeah. Um, I guess my next question for you is: What do you what do you uh, find is the most challenging about the career um, that you chose, if any? And then just and then what is it that drives you to kind of push through uh, those obstacles? Like, what's the bigger? What's the why? Why do Why do you do what you do? I mean, basically, one the challenging thing about um, photography is that it's hard to be taken serious as a photographer. Mm -hmm. Cuz a lot of people look at us look at a um at a photographer as this this a like person with a camera. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need a photographer for a job. Oh, don't worry. I know Shimoy. He just take a photo for us and we're good. Mm -hmm. It's like also like models too. There's different types like mm -hmm. models. There's models that like wake up, get on call to go shoot e-commerce. Right. Then there's the Kendalls and the, right. the Gigi's of like, where they their face yeah, their face like they like they will be booked for a campaign. They'll be the face of a campaign. While there's just there's like all the models that just wake up, they do their e-commerce work, and they they make their dollar. Yeah, that's not what I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be on this level yeah. where it's like, oh, um, are we we're doing we're doing a a Maybelline campaign? Well, yeah, and we got Shimoy leading the campaign mm -hmm. as a photographer. Like a brand, as building a brand. a brand. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like I want to be able to like yeah. Like what's cool about I don't know if you. I mean you. You obviously know Brian. Yeah, Brian I know Brian. Mm -hmm. So like yeah, I'm actually like I actually like really admire the fact that he's a name. Mm -hmm. You say Brian, they know so, he's done a campaign with, too. I think it was it Urban with Tommy. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that like he's walking in Milan right now and his photo is it's on one there. of the biggest billboards in Milan. And he could literally just sit there yeah. in the car, just like, "That's my shit." I did that. Yeah. <laughs> simple as that. Uh -huh. It sounds. It sounds. It, I mean, it sounds simple. It. I mean, does it really sound simple? It doesn't <laughs> sound like, just like, just basically the request that I want. Just yeah. like, just like basically like. I know a lot of people are asking. Yeah, I'm just trying to make money doing photos and everything. Like, and it's like, why? Why when you can go beyond that? Like yeah. you said, it can be a brand. It can be a face, yeah. and not. Yeah, I totally see the, the 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 difference that you just kind of outlined yeah. there, where it's like there are those people that roll out of bed and they get to, they still treat it as a hobby themselves. Yeah. People don't take them serious yeah. as a brand or as a professional. Mm -hmm. I actually like that you touched on that because that's honestly one of the reasons why I decided to transition out of being a dancer mm -hmm. because I felt like people didn't respect it as a profession. It mm -hmm. was looked at as a hobby. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're doing a music video. We need a bunch of people to just show up real quick and. Mm -hmm. and you know, do some choreography and then we send yeah. them on their way. We'll give them credit and exposure. Yeah. And while sometimes that's great, especially if you're new to the industry and you're just kind of getting your feet wet, yeah. you do need credit and exposure to be more marketable. However, there are people that have been in the game and, and know a little bit more. They don't need credit exposure. They need money to pay their bills. Yeah. And I think that where that respect is going to come from is from us realizing we have to teach people that value that we have. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And we can't allow people to just think that Oh, we're that disposable, and we don't have to settle for e-commerce. You know what I mean? Yeah. We can be our own brands, but I think that that starts with us believing it first, and then being able to teach other people. Like, okay, cool. If you want me, here's how much I cost. Da da da. da. But like you said, you mentioned earlier how like Kendall and Gigi and Joan Smalls and all them their faces, where mm. it's like they're getting top dollar. Mm. Even as a dancer, as a photographer, we all have the potential to create that much value for yeah. ourselves. But it starts with us realizing it first and then just upping our game mm -hmm. um, with connecting ourselves with the right brands, with the right clients, making sure that our skills are up to par. Just It's all those little, little things, you know what I mean? But it definitely is a huge issue in the industry where I think that a lot of what we do gets looked at as just a hobby and not a real profession. Yeah.
So I like that you touched on that. Um, I think my, my final question for after that was, what is it that drives you? What is it that makes you wake up in the morning and you're like, you know what, I'm doing this because I really want to. I mean, for some people, it's like, I want to buy my family this big home mm -hmm. back where, where I'm from. Or I want to inspire, like I know for me, it's like I really want to inspire um, young minorities where I grew up that mm -hmm. like you can be more than, than this society. You can be more than where we're from. You mm -hmm. can get out and you can do great things in the world. And you don't necessarily have to work for other people. You can have your own business. You can have your own brand. Mm -hmm. What is, what's your mission, I guess? What's your why? What drives Shamoy to keep pushing? And want, why do you want that campaign? Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, I just, it drives me because, like, I don't, you don't re really see, like, a photographer doing, like, what Brian's doing. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't go out and just, like, like, oh, like, shot by Shamoy. Mm -hmm. Like right next to a huge yeah. Nobody cares about the photographer. It's more about the subject exactly. or the talent. So it's just like what I'm seeing now is just that like you know like how they say they say like now it's like a in music the producers are starting to be more of an artist than the artist. <laughs> so it's just like I feel that like in the years to come it's gonna be at a point where it's like everyone wants to know who's that photographer. Yeah, what's he doing? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be at a point where it's just like you see a photo. Of like Kendall. Right. And they just see like on the side on the billboard shot by mm -hmm. Shamoy, which I know is probably gonna happen because mm -hmm. I'm just gonna speak that into existence. <laughs> but yeah, like it's it's like I just feel like the way how like just like media is a, is adapting. Yeah. I just like I wouldn't be surprised if the photographers are like gonna be the face of a lot of stuff. Yeah, too. and I think I think that social media has played a huge role in that because mm -hmm. because of social media, like before social media, we had like making the video and mm -hmm. access grants and those things that would give us a little bit more of an insight on mm -hmm. the different layers and components that make these products great. Yeah. Now with social media, it's like people can tag who that makeup artist was, mm -hmm. they can tag who that photographer was, they can tag who that choreographer was, mm -hmm. and now it's giving, again, all the different components that make these things so great. Yeah everyone's getting equal uh, opportunity to present themselves as being valuable and as an important part of the project. Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of weight always goes into um, who was the star or the face of yeah. the campaign or who's on the billboard. And people don't even think that like 10 people are the reason that looks that yeah. great. It wasn't Kylie. She showed up mm -hmm. and got, I mean, granted some people have creative involvement too, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just her that mm -hmm. made this great. It was the people who, it was the creative director who came up with the whole concept. Mm -hmm. It was the photographer who shot it, the person who lit it well, the makeup artist, the wardrobe stylist. Mm -hmm. Everyone plays an important role. Yeah. And I think that it's great that now with social media, we all can all have our voice and all have a platform to kind of exist on our own. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, because before, it's just like people really didn't even care who made the beats. Right. It was just, mm -hmm. it was just a good beat. And then now it's just being that like, like all like artists is, I, I don't want to say like I'm bashing on artists, mm -hmm. but it's just like to me, they just all sound the same. Mm -hmm. And but like what gets you to listen to that music is the production behind it. You're like, whoa, right. this 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 song goes hard because of that beat. Yes. And you're like, who who who's the producer? Mm -hmm. And now you've seen producers making their own albums. Yeah, they are. Because of that. And they're like the face of that album mm -hmm. doesn't say like Migos featuring produced by yeah. by like um Metro, Metro, Boomin yeah, Metro anymore. Boomin. It's is. Metro Boomin featuring. Yeah, that's a thing now. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like, yeah, like if that could happen, why not have it be shot by Shamoy right. on a billboard Absolutely. instead of in a fine print? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, times changing, and I just know that like it's not even about like a drive. It's just something that you gotta be prepared for. Yeah, because you're gonna know, you, like, like, like I said, I know Brian's gonna go far like super far because he he's just and it's it's also about being smart too mm -hmm. it's about knowing where to go yeah and it's just like i know that like he knows where he's going he's sticking to the right people yeah sticking to the right brands already has his billboard or he's he's living the dream i just know that like like i wish that dude nothing but the best because the dude's a good good yeah. guy and yeah i just know that like i'm gonna be where he's at Real soon. That's at awesome. the pace that I'm going, I'm going to be there real soon. So. That's awesome. So I guess at the end of the day, it's like you don't <laughs> don't be afraid to, to work towards building a brand. It's not going to happen overnight. may not happen in a year, three years, five years. But I think at the end of the day, yeah, just don't be afraid to build a brand. And, and as a, 
even if you're not the talent or the main subject, you can have the, the same joy of, of having a billboard that you worked on or a commercial mm -hmm. or something um, on a larger scale. Um, I do want to address, though, that you know, not everybody wants the responsibility mm -hmm. of having a brand that big and having to manage all these different aspects and having to deal with that, and that's fine, too. Mm -hmm. But the entertainment industry, when it, when it really comes down to the nitty-gritty of it, unless you work to be on that level, that level and grow um, a sense of value within yourself and your brand, people will treat you like what you do is a hobby and that it's uh, disposable and sometimes the rates won't match up. You decide what your career is going to be and you decide you know how much how much you're going to be worth so just something to take into consideration mm. before we close is there anything else that you want to say to our wonderful people any last minute uh, advice <laughs> i mean yeah like another one is like don't be afraid to say the word no and don't be afraid to hear the word no there you go that's that simple <laughs> so i mean i like i said i love i love when love getting rejected mm -hmm. it's my favorite thing because it's like it's just a little, it's just like a pain for like a good 10 minutes. Yeah. Rather than saying, all right, I'm not going to go up to that person because I know he's probably going to say no. Yeah. You would have never knew that that guy was probably down to earth, was just looking for someone. Right. To like add on the team. I tell people that all the time. Yeah. So yeah. You just, just never know. Yeah. Like be comfortable. Again, keep it authentic how we mentioned earlier um, in our conversation, but Never be afraid to talk about the things that you do or want to do with people that you meet, especially if it comes up and it's relevant to the conversation yeah. because you just never know. It could be at a bus stop, in a restaurant, in the bathroom, who has the opportunity that you've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. um, and what you said about uh, don't be afraid to say no. That's mm -hmm. actually like one of the like proven uh, success tips and like one of the most successful people in the world yeah. is the ability to be like, you know what? No, I'm good. I'm yeah. good on that opportunity. I don't need it. If you know you, what I mean? So yeah, if you know you have value, yeah, you have to number one. That's another um, advice to know what your value is. To say no, yes. you can't just say no. Yeah, because you just want to say say no. no. Just yeah. know that like, like if you want to get another f dancer or photographer, by all means get that other photographer. I just know that like you you're you're gonna be missing out like. In a sense, like you do have to be modest. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you know you're good, just literally just look at it as a, oh, that's their loss. Yeah. I could find. Yeah. Like, my time's gonna come eventually. So it was just like, if it's at a point where someone just wants to do work with you, they want to like basically pitch that they could give you good opportunities for a lesser pay, and you know that like you're at a part, you had a stage in your life where it's like, I don't need to be doing yeah. this anymore. Yeah. Like yeah, just say no. Like listen, I've been doing this. I've been. I already went through that stage. Yeah. Why would I want to go back down? Yeah. Like I'm. All, I'm always trying to go up. So right. just don't be afraid to say no because if I have the value, in in whatever craft that I do, I know that like I did so and so. Why would I want to go back down? Right. To that. So just don't. And be again, to say no. you teach people um, how to treat you. Mm -hmm. Period. So yeah. I think that's a great note to end on. I'm gonna drop some links uh, below to kind of uh, show you guys how to see Shamoy and connect with him and see what he's up to after this interview. So I'll drop those below. And again, if you like what you're seeing, like, subscribe, follow Access to Creators Club on Instagram and then accesstocreatorsclub.com is the website. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> man.